Hello. Uh, good morning. So uh, we're going to play uh, a little game today. Uh, but before that, I want to do a little intro and then talk a little bit about wearables, um, how they're designed from a high level, let's say conceptual level, and then we're actually going to get to uh, play ourselves. So um, for people who are tweeting, by the way, I'm not, so uh, feel free. Uh, a little bit uh, about uh, my studio, New Deal Design. Uh, we're designing a lot of uh, hardware products in uh, Silicon Valley. We are located in uh, San Francisco. Uh, some of the work uh, could be familiar. This is the Lytro camera. Uh, we've done uh, the design for uh, Fitbit from day, day one. Uh, a few generations by now, and we're doing things that are beyond that. For instance, like um, uh, a fitness uh, tracker, for, if you wish, for dogs uh, called Whistle. And uh, we've been uh, part of the Aura project that, by the way, um, today there was a nice piece in the Wired magazine about um, this thing actually happening and uh, working. Um, one of the latest companies we helped uh, uh, designing uh, is called Sproutling, which is a combination of um, hardware, software, uh, cloud. Um, in this case, this is dealing with uh, next generation um, uh, baby monitor, if you wish. It has a home station that monitors the room. It has an app. Um, it has uh, a wrist. Uh, device that is actually placed on the baby's calf rather than on the wrist. Uh, you see some of the images here. And that brings me um, to a core fundamental about what we do. Um, every product we do um, starts as a kind of an enigma or some kind of a, a riddle that is uh, between three main um, factors. Uh, what is your hardware strategy? What is your local software strategy? And how are these related to uh, the cloud? Uh, once you've done that and you figured out simultaneously these things together, you could actually establish a layer of service. And with that, you could also establish a community layer that is uh, broadcasting, if you wish, the brand values uh, to the world. And you build your, obviously, uh, loyal uh, customer base. So, this is more or less what we do at New Deal Design. And uh, I call it technology design. It's an interesting thing. Uh, there is actually no exact name. I'm by training industrial designer, but uh, through the years, I found myself working and dealing with things that are supposedly engineering or supposedly uh, interaction designs. Uh, the whole sphere, in my opinion, changed a lot. And nowadays, I'm calling it uh, technology design. Um, the most important thing as you play, and you'll do that in a few minutes, is keep the rational uh, side of your mind there, but make sure that you're paying a lot of attention to the emotional side. Do you really want to carry this device? Does it really connect to, um, to you emotionally, personally? I think a lot of the discussions we've been hearing are very much about ROI, technology features. Um, there was a, a lot of discussion about investment. I think our job as designers, to some degree, uh, is to bring the other side, the human side, and it's actually very, very influential on the devices that you create. And we'll see that uh, shortly. So with that said, wearables are exploding. The problem is that we're getting to these situations that we are both near each other, not with each other. And we need to figure out how to assimilate technology into our life in a way that is actually enhancing them rather than creating this weird cost-benefit uh, formula that is unclear. Is it good? Is it bad? It has a drawback, has some pluses and minuses. So our job and your job today would be to actually try to mitigate these uh, negatives and primarily prevent that from happening. And actually, we'll deal with that specifically uh, later. Now, when you look at the approach 
taken in the tech sector today, you would see probably 99.9% .9 of the consumers sitting on the right, and they're seeking nice experiences, thrilling experiences. They want to enjoy themselves. There are very, very, very few people who actually want to be like the guys on the left. And the guys on the left are driven by a paradigm of generating and consuming data and analyzing it and walking, living through that. The guys on the right, on the other hand, are actually seeking experiences that are meaningful, emotional, and actually uh, enjoyable. So uh, when we talk about designing wearables, things getting, are getting a lot more complicated. And I'll go through some issues. There is a, a serious issue of size. Now, the issue of size is not some kind of, um, well, we could do it in few sizes and sell it in few sizes. Not so, because if you go to the fundamentals, for instance, what is the size of, size of the screen? What is the size of the battery that that screen requires? What is the interaction model that is set into the UI that is presented on this screen? Suddenly, you get to understand that some fundamental things in the program that you're working on are already set, and the size is already there. So one of the things that you'll do today, you're actually going to play with the size and minimize and localize the size, and we'll talk about it later, to the right size. And this is really important operative. The right size is not necessarily the best size, and so on. Now, talking about fashion, fashion is much discussed when we're talking about wearables. Unfortunately, there is not one fashion. And when you actually dissect it from a form factor, there are, and just pay attention to the shoes, for instance, form factors are so dynamic in fashion. So one, one moment you're actually walking around in sneakers, and then a few hours later, you're walking in high heels. So this is a big difference. And we need to make sure that the devices that are done as wearables, they need to be either fashion proof or actually mitigate the whole story of fashion and work into a completely different space, be above fashion, if you wish. Um, there is a fundamental problem that is really tough to explain. When people carry something on themselves, it becomes part of their personality. They walk to the mirror, they look at themselves, and they see, do I see myself in that mirror? And the big problem is to create that bond that you can identify and feel com comfortable and secure in your image as you walk around. And that's a real significant psychological barrier people have to uh, using um, um, wearables. There is a ton of issues related to perception of gender and how people perceive their gender. There are issues of fit. Now, many of these wearables have sensors. The sensors are trying to latch onto a biological feature, let's say, uh, a vein to actually get pulse. But people eventually opt to uh, wear it loose or tight, and you cannot do much about it. So you need to figure out how to mitigate these issues. And the last, I guess, in this um, uh, calculation is placement. You could put wearables just about anywhere. Uh, I just put something like 20 placements here. Some of them are actually revealed, and we're all familiar with them. You know, you've seen them. But some of them are actually concealed. You will not know that that person has it because it's under a shirt or something like that. Talk about wearables. I want to stop for a second and look a little bit into the future. This is a project that we've done uh, in our experience design team at New Deal. And it's looking into sensory technology that is just around the corner it also tries to sort out issues of identity, uh, theft, or authentication. And we created a device. We call it Project Underskin. It's a device that is interacting from under the skin. It has a set of interactions. In this case, you could see it 
actually uh, giving you access privileges into a uh, uh, home, let's say. Yeah. Okay, so the device is on the left there, and we placed it around your thumb. So there is uh, an area which is bigger that is facing you in a more, I would say, uh, concealed manner. And there is an area on top of the uh, hand that is more revealed. And in doing so, you could, for instance, uh, check your um, biologi biological condition, if you wish. Uh, in this case, you see that there is something blinking there. And only you know what this means. And this could be a sector that is about sleep. I just arrived from San Francisco, so I'm a little jet lagged. So maybe that's my condition now. Um, you could create authentication patterns. You could create, um, you could create uh, some exchanges of information. And you could also create forms of self-expression that including uh, you know, interaction with loved ones and so on. So this is just a brief intro. Let's play. And the name of the game is The Third Eye. I've done this, um, I guess, half a year ago, something like that in Sydney, Australia, in a slightly smaller crowd. And what we are trying to do is to create a wearable that is using um, a teeny camera. Let me, it's that small. You'll get one of these. This is a googly eye toy, but it's very much along the lines of a uh, camera, camera sizes. And the notion is that we're going to tap into this um, two trends. One is body augmentation. And the other one is a trend that deals with capturing the life around us. So what we're going to do, we're going to take famous actors. I'm not sure all of them are Austrians, but let's say some of them are Austrians. You're going to have uh, pictures, and you could actually draw on these uh, beautiful people and play around with a variety of objects to create your own third eye wearable that allows you to uh, capture everything that you see and capture your life if you wish. Um, I think he may need more than one wearable. Um, and so, so what do we have? OK, we have uh, a bunch of googly eyes. They're really teeny. We have a stick, OK? We have sellotape. And the secret ingredient is a chewing gum. So this chiclet chewing gum is actually very, very similar to a small battery, which tend to be more or less the size of the board we need. So make sure you chew only after we finish. So this is probably equivalent of a battery of around 100, 150 milliamps for people. So what you can do, and I'll do one very quickly here, you could take that, and we actually do that in the studio. You know, you could actually bend things quite easily. And then I'm actually going to put my battery at the back there. Okay, and I'm actually going to put the eye somewhere. Okay, here it is. And now I got a device, okay? So it may look a little weird, which is the purpose of this game, but you will feel where things could go on your face or around your face in a lot more visceral and therefore get a lot better knowledge of the core hardware architecture. So what you see here is now we, in design, got to a point that we're dealing more with core hardware architecture. So if an engineer will come and say, OK, but I need a twice size battery, you will see immediately what it means. It means that you cannot actually capture it behind your ear. OK, so uh, while, so let's spread around the, the material. So while this is happening, 
Um, I'll explain the rules of the game. So we'll uh, start, and I want you guys to think a little bit about the third eye and where you would like to position it. Uh, try to sketch a little bit um, on uh, the pictures you got. And simultaneously, while you sketch, also try to play around with uh, the chewing gum and other elements, OK? And as you do so, I will walk around and comment and answer questions if needed and so on. And every few minutes, let's say every five or maybe 10 minutes, we'll stop and talk a little bit about interesting stuff that we learn. And through that, we'll do like two or three rounds of that, get a little bit of the feel of how things are done in reality and how complex they are and how uneasy it is. Now, one thing I already noticed, some people took more than one eye. So you can conceivably look at it as a multi-camera device. So just make sure that you could do one camera, three cameras, 15 cameras. Sorry? How does this work? Uh, you should try to first sketch where you want to place it on the, um, on the head, on the face, and then try to build a mock-up yep. using the, uh, the stick yep. with some reinforcement of the tape, and then put the, the battery where you feel it should be and place the um, uh, eye where the camera should be. Now, one thing you'll get to very quickly that you want the camera to look into a certain direction. So one of the biggest problems with that is actually aiming the camera. Where is the camera going to be aimed at? Sorry, a pen. Uh, I. Uh, there are issues with no pens, so I actually have no more pens, so, but I'll ask. But maybe you could actually deal just with the object itself. You could just do the mock-up, yeah, exactly. Okay. Now, by the way, the fact that you have a, a little stick doesn't mean that you need to use it. That's a big hint. You don't have to use the stick. OK, there is one little problem, though. OK, so we got one, one uh, little uh, innovation already. What's your name? Sorry? Hmm? Hussein. So Hussein already invented a very simple trick. He will take the camera from the outside of, let's say, the lapel here, and will have the battery on the other side magnetized. So when they're put together, they're actually cinching the fabric and hold position. But there's one problem, data. What are you going to do with, so first, absolutely, you know that you need to uh, convey the electricity somehow. And the second thing is, I said one little thing about the chiclet, the, the chewing gum. It's not only the battery, it's also the size of the electronics. So there's going to be some level of image processing done locally. So we need to somehow communicate that. So you want to reflect on that? I, not not yeah. yet. I didn't think it over. <laughs> I, I didn't think it over yet, so I... Uh, uh, well, 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 well. Don't, don't let go. It's a very beautiful idea. Yeah. So maybe there are ways to do that. I know that you can charge things wirelessly now. Yeah, it's true. So uh, I think, uh, but I, I don't know technically how to, to sort that out. Yeah. But you can do things wirelessly. So the camera can be charged through the battery wirelessly. OK. And um, regarding data connectivity, again, technically, I'm not sure what protocols can we use, but you can establish some form of communication between the camera and the board okay. and the battery. And one of the let's say, paradigms in your concept was that you didn't create a physical connection between the two elements. But yeah. maybe you can. Yeah. Maybe like we use pins to put stuff on our clothes. You could actually penetrate through the fabric with yeah. a pin yeah. and create a physical connection. Yeah. OK? Yeah. All right. So. Yes. 
It could be anywhere, I would say, shoulder and above. And the notion is that you want to more or less capture where you're looking and more or less aiming at. Okay. You're not sure. Let's see what you got. So we're talking about something around the ear. Well, you're blessed with long hair, unlike me. So what will be the first problem with things on the ear? What will be the first problem with things on the ear and cameras? Well, you could take it away with, with just a um, gesture of your hand. OK, so the issue is hair, right? Hair will actually get in the way and actually will cover exactly. your, your camera every once in a while. So you need to manage the, the hair somehow. Okay? <laughs> I don't have that problem. I do. <laughs> okay. We got, uh, how do you feel about yourself? Let's see. Yeah. Let's... <laughs> I feel think we silly, have something right? here. So that is a, an interesting observation. How do you know that you feel silly? Because you're lying. Exactly. That's, you see, that's an interesting observation. It's, we are social animals. The first thing that, what's your name, sorry? Cam? Campbell. Campbell. Okay. Campbell. The first thing that Campbell was actually reacting to is me reacting to him. So I smile a teeny bit too much. And that suggested that maybe something is a little off. All right, so that's a very, very, very strong indication whether your wearable design works or not. So people typically looks, uh, you know, look at you know, focus groups and all that. Just look around. Got okay. it. We have an interesting design over there okay. of the gentleman in the yellow okay. T-shirt. All right, I'm going to walk around. OK, yes. I rested mine in my clavicle. Because yeah. there's a natural indentation of the okay. neck, um, and then would have it fastened as okay. a necklace. So how with a necklace? Okay. Mm. So he's now, wearing a necklace around this neck. So there's going to be a necklace, and this little cavity here will actually secure the object, yes. unless you're running to catch the bus. Unless you're running to catch the bus. Okay. But then it's going to be your if you've got video or photo feed, it's going to be so jogged that you okay. even if it was. Okay. Secured somewhere, yeah. unless you have anti, if, unless you have stabilization, okay. it's not going to be useful so footage. So, could you tell him what is a problem currently with the design? Well, it uh, depends on the clothes you're wearing. Okay. Um, so I think maybe, especially for women, it could be maybe a nice jewelry tool. Yeah. Or it might, um, yeah, they they won't like it that much. Um, uh, the design needs to be very very unique. So, before we go into styling critique, the fundamental issue is that I'm wearing a V-neck tee, and you have a, a, a crew tee. And that crew tee is actually covering the concept now. Oh, yeah. So, so just a little anecdotal thing. All right. Um, any more? OK. Here's one. You want to stay on? Let, put you on stage, OK? How do you feel? I feel amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what I did was uh, uh, I made a snap-on. Yeah. Right now it's attached by tape, but it's a yeah. very early prototype. So um, it's a snap-on. It ex yeah. uh, expected this very, very light nano stuff, you know. What, what is the, the stick and this doing one, to your eye? What, why is it uh, there? That is, that is uh, actually a mirror, micro, micro mirror array system that's going to reflect, project okay. image into my iris. Why so, do you need that? So I can get feedback of what I do, what I want to do, social media, whatever But I it never is. ask for feedback. Well, I <laughs> upgraded your proposal. <laughs> so we already have a feature creep already. We just started. We already doubled the cost of the wearable and went into you know, the high hundreds of dollars right now. By the way, I think uh, I think the Google Glass is $1,500. So you took a, a $150 bill of material and made it into $500. <laughs> oh, I didn't have that information, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a good idea. One thing, though, as I interact with you and you interact with me, there is a little problem. Your line of sight and my line of sight are obscured by this uh, stick, right? 
And that is a fundamental problem with anything on our eyes. We communicate through our eyes. We actually try to lock, lock eyesight, and that's very important. OK, nice. Thank you. Yes. Can you come on stage? I can. Can yeah. I use the whiteboard? Yes, you can. You need your hands? Or can I'm not using it, but here's you take it. So basically, a wearable is something you wear. Yeah. So I propose a hat. Mm -hmm. A hat? Yes. OK. And on the banner here, you can make as many cameras, cameras like you want. OK. okay? Cheap one or several. OK. So you can see all around. So it's interesting that you suggested that. First, you don't wear a hat. But it can be a bandana. It can be uh, something which is hiding the cameras. Okay. Basically, this is the most efficient way to have all the cameras synchronized. It, it, it's efficient. And, and the, the, the interesting thing here, just to, uh, I think it's a beautiful sketch. The so one thing, let's hold on. Uh, the interesting thing about hairstyle is that people are quite sensitive to it. So if you are taking a bandana this morning and actually put it on your head, you're making some kind of a statement. For some people, that will be very nice. For, for other people, it will be less than that. OK. Fashionable. Why aren't you using it today? Because I don't have this technology. Because you are not connected to fashion. Or the issue if is I, that there's not, there's not one fashion. There are a variety of fashions. That's why this hat is different. But the point is, okay. you work with the trends. You can build up a trend. Therefore, with this camera, it's trendy to have an iPhone. Or you can have this camera, okay. it became something okay. trendy. So, uh, it's, it's an excellent point. So let's talk about this whole mechanism of building trends. How many people on this planet could really build trends? Okay, there is some special studios, Beyonce, actually. Beyonce can tr build trend. You and I not. No, there is... <laughs> okay, this is more complex than that. Um, it exists um, Premier Vision, and in fashion, there is a lot of business regarding which color you're going to wear in two sure. or three years. Yes. This is the same principle. I, I, I agree, but, you know, I don't want to... I agree there's some level of trend building, but still... A jacket is a jacket is a jacket is a jacket. There are very few occasions in the history of fashion that somebody invented a new object of fashion. OK, so let's, let's move on. And thanks a lot. Thank it's you. very good. Uh, I'm trying to I be. Think, I think we have. Is yeah. it what I think it is? Is it what I think it is? I'm Describe not sure, it. But it's, it's, it also goes into that. Um, fashion direction, yeah. you can pin it in your hair, okay. you can wear it as a brooch. So it's a pin, right? I could yes. pin it on my clothes it's as well. It's actually a flower. Yes, I exactly. see some kind of a little rose. So it's very beautiful and it has a very strong poetic quality. And um, that is wonderful. And the interesting thing if we are talking about fashion, just to augment it, it's a relatively small statement. It's a relatively small statement that you could more or less throw on your hair, and it's not like big, you know, major statement that makes you into a different personality. Okay, very nice. We hope it's also customizable. It's customizable <laughs> and biodegradable uh, and but, but machine I... washable <laughs> and <Right>. yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can do a selfie. Okay. All right. Uh, you, you show me the middle finger, and other than that, <laughs> well, sorry, that's yeah, that's not well placed, but yeah, you, know, that's you picked the wrong finger. Okay, <laughs> but that's a pretty nice ring, right? Yes, ring. Ring is an interesting, very interesting, uh, and relatively uncharted uh, form factor. Um, I don't have track over time, by the way. So we still have a little bit. Yeah. Uh, let's go over there. The gentleman in the suit over there. All right.
So I was looking at the pictures and I saw a few different um, people, different genders. And I didn't only look at the pictures, I also thought, okay, what would these people be like from their personality? Yeah. So my discovery was that everybody's different and so I need a product that suits um, to a big crowd because I'm a startup and yeah. I want to sell it to a lot, a lot of people. So, so, so let, let's do like a timeout for a second. Yeah. So the, your primary assumption that you need to cover a big footprint in the market, mm -hmm. that's, so I'm just noting that, that yeah. that's uh, your prime assumption. Yeah. There'll be others in the room that say, okay, I don't care about 90% yeah. of the people, I care only about 10%. So yeah. this is also a design strategy, if you wish. Of course. Okay. Yeah, well, and I uh, picked that way. So I thought also about cost, what would be the most expensive part of the product. And yeah. I thought, okay, it's uh, certainly the camera and the battery and, uh, you know, You're getting a very rational work. guy. Okay, um, so yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's, I'm, all, that's I'm all build up now. So what um, is the object? And um, <laughs> the cheapest thing will be probably the, the things that I attach it to. And I really like the idea of, uh, you know, using a, a, a magnet. Yeah. So uh, I've got three different prototypes of it, you know, depending yeah. on who you are. So yeah. uh, this could be probably really cheaply designed. And I'm wearing a tie, so I could basically attach this thing to a tie. A tie, clip. okay. And have it here, yeah. yeah. If I'm also, you know, some people are more introvertive, some are more extrovertive, so my, m one, some want to show it off, some don't. Okay. So if it doesn't suit, you have like a, a metal badge okay. that you can just clip okay. it. Okay. So so, so you build a, a, a design strategy that is based on ubiquity. Basically, you want to cover the biggest market footprint mm -hmm. you want. And you do that by allowing a lot of adaptability through accessories. There will be yeah. some kind of uh, attachment accessories. Yeah. And that's a, a very effective market uh, approach or design approach. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry. Yeah. Where the microphone is, actually, over there. So this is a boom, right? Yes, except that I don't, w I don't walk around with these microphones all the time. Yeah. So th this is called a boom. Yeah, it could be smaller. Boom mic and a, and, a, and a boom camera is um, a very good solution, except that every once in a while you do that. You know, you wanna you wanna walk around and sometimes people touch their face. So this is a big problem, actually. People actually touch their face quite a lot. OK, but it's a, it's a good idea. Oh, <laughs> take it. Just don't swallow it. <laughs> OK, uh, anything else? Headband, OK. So I, I want to go through some of the, the issues that uh, we had here and try to uh, cover um, some kind of big topic. So the real uh, discussion over there about uh, the size of the intended user base was really a big problem. You, typically, you need to figure out how wide is your footprint while you do that. And what you'll find out that some ideas are catered to a narrow uh, section of the population, and it could be actually more sticky, if you wish to that narrow of population rather than dilute the story to um, uh, you know, trying to cover everyone, but then you don't get anything. So this is one thing. The other thing that we dealt with quite a lot was fashion. Fashion is a very, very complex issue. And if you walk around the beautiful uh, palace here, you'll see people take a completely different approach. And we probably have, you know, 500 different trends within this little community that we have today here. Just if we're talking about fashion trends, there are people who are expert in that, and they could actually dissect what you carry and how you carry and so on. And you may find that we have hundreds of versions on that. So uh, that's, that's an inter interesting proposition. The other thing that I don't know if you guys paid attention, but I'll, I'll grab something. Uh, you know, give me your flower, which is, I love the flower. Okay. So, you see, the camera is a teeny, teeny, teeny object. And we get to a point where we actually enlarge the object artificially in order to make it meaningful. 
And that's an interesting paradigm. So typically in design, for a long, long time, we were told not to grow things artificially. But we're getting to a point now, an inflection point, if you wish, in the history of design and technology, that suddenly we need to tell a bigger story than what the technology is. The technology is nearly disappearing. So we are now bringing poetic values from a variety of other sources, and we're using these poetic values. And by the way, the user interface of the first Fitbit was based on Flower. So if you reach your um, daily 10,000 steps, you would get a Flower. So that is a very nice gesture that we just use now, and it's just enlarging the object probably by 3, 4, 5x. Thank you. So um, we are just about there. So questions? Anyone have yes. any general we, questions? We have questions over our sure. audience interaction tool. Yeah. Uh, and one is, it's highlighted on the screen, where do you see the variables going in the future? I don't want to have three plus wristbands on me. OK. So it's an interesting question. So the way I, I, I uh, dissect the wearable phenomena now is the following. So first, it's, it's just the beginning. But I think in the future, wearables are going to be spread into two types of uh, big groups. One group is going to be focused on um, biology, medicine, and controlling our bodies. And that group is going to get smaller and smaller and probably going to spread around our body in a variety of ways, including under our skin. And that's something that is happening very much now. Um, a second group of wearables is actually going to deal primarily with what I call mobile computing. Uh, mobile computing now, today, with the smartwatches, essentially follows a paradigm that the smartwatch is some kind of a monitor over your phone. The big problem is that I have my phone right here. So how do you split the relationship between the mobile wearable phone, or call it whatever, and the real phone is actually a major um, challenge. So this is where I see wearables go. And those wearables that are more on the mobile computing side will need the interaction and most likely will be more prominent, sizable, and uh, revealed rather than the biological medical ones. Okay, yes. Maybe actually connected to this, the next question is, what's your personal opinion on the Apple Watch? How big and wide could its future be? Apple is a wonderful company. I love their products. Uh, don't, don't worry. You can speak openly. It's not on record. It's not. No, I'm sure, yeah. So I, I think that uh, the Apple Watch will be uh, a huge success by numbers. Uh, however, however, as I just said, I think we are still at the beginning of finding the right formula to figure what is inherently done on a watch and what is inherently done on a mobile phone. And from that perspective, I expected a little bit more of a statement from Apple, a little bit more distinct um, direction or paradigm shifting uh, that distinctly suggests that you do certain things only on your, eye wa on your watch and, only th and the other things only on your phone. Yes. Anything else? Uh, maybe like this is interesting. Um, yeah. Do you start design the designing process with the design or with the functionality? Well, as you saw here, it's intertwined. You cannot design wearables just by sketching superficial sketches. You cannot design wearables by throwing everything in the kitchen sink in terms of uh, functionality. This is essentially a back and forth iterative process where you're actually experimenting and you're going back to spec and revisit and change the spec in order to find the right best optimized location and form factor. So what is happening now in the industry, it used to be that uh, we'll get a spec sheet and a list of components, and we'll just design around that. 
playing. Now we are creating the spec sheet and the feature set as we play with the, uh, the object, because some of these features cannot get in. Physically, they are too big, they are too cumbersome to interact with, and they are not workable. Maybe one more question that's an interesting one. Do yep. you think variables are condemned to have a similar short life cycle, such as fashion? Would you buy new ones every season? That's a very interesting uh, point, and it highlights one of the issues with fashion that is uh, relatively, um, I would say, uh, short-lived. Now, I believe that uh, there will be many solutions to these issues. I do uh, believe that wearables are essential, and we'll just get used to it. Now, one of the solutions for the um, time limits on fashion would be some kind of um, a modular approach where you could actually dress, if you wish, the wearable in a variety of fashionable uh, skins, if you wish. The other would be that we'll change them every once in a while. Uh, luckily, they are not the most expensive thing on the planet. And the third issue, which I think is very important, is that as wearables become more and more functional, and they are becoming more functional, we will think about them as beyond fashion and beyond trend and become part of our life, very much like our mobile phones and so on. And they'll serve two, three, four, five years and so on. Yes. OK, we're, we're out of time. Maybe let's take this last question okay. with a quick answer okay. because it has many okay. upvotes. Where do you see 3D printing in the variable trend? OK, so uh, 3D printing is a wonderful technology that is in the making for something like 30 years. It is uh, offering um, a great um, personalization, if you wish. I could scan my nose and adapt something one-to-one -to, -one to my nose, and this is only my nose, and nothing will fit, and this is done for me. So 3D printing, in that sense, could create amazing fit from a form perspective, but also you could also uh, do that in different colors, different patterns, so it also could fit in terms of uh, fashion or appearance. However, however, 3D printing is still not mature enough. As much as I would have loved it to happen, the materials are not there, the reliability, let's say the impact resistance are not there, and the finish, if you're talking about jewelry, many times we're talking about a very high level of finish. Let's say uh, it's shiny, so it's very high polish. We cannot get these things now in 3D printing without secondary and tertiary processes. Okay. There, unfortunately, yeah. too many good questions. Yeah. I have to take the next one. Okay. Because I think that's really something that a lot of people yeah. ask themselves yeah. after the short session. How much does a Fitbit design process cost? The Fitbit? About how much, yeah. So if I came uh, to I you as Fitbit and said, or anyone, I want to have a variable, like what would it cost me to? No, I, cannot, I cannot say that, uh, <laughs> obviously. But uh, typically, I would say just in generalizing, a process of designing a wearable, seriously, is, a, is, a, is about a year, year and a half. And really? involves a lot of people. Uh, involves excellent uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, interaction designers, uh, industrial designers, as you saw, and so on. Uh, it's a team that probably is around 30 people. So do the calculation, year, year and a half of, you know, I'm talking about core 30 people. So it's not, not cheap. All right, OK. Our okay. time is up, unfortunately. Okay. But please give a big applause to speaker Gadi. Thank you.